Well, the expansion of the Singapore Armed Forces training space in Queensland, Australia, is on track despite the pandemic. Singapore Defence Minister Ng Eng Hen gave this update while visiting personnel currently participating in Exercise Wallaby. Under a treaty signed in 2020, the Shoal Water Bay training area will be expanded by 2024. The new Greenvale training area scheduled for completion by 2028. Uh, together, SAF will be able to conduct large-scale integrated training across all three services in an area roughly 10 times the size of Singapore. To allow up to 14,000 personnel and 2,400 vehicles and equipment to take part. There will also be state-of-the-art features like an urban live firing facility. Dr Ng says these developments have boosted Singapore's confidence in the SAF's capabilities, as well as in its relationship with Australia. We can uh, explore further areas in which we can strengthen the military-to-military -military ties. These opportunities are hard to get, where, you, where another country uh, trust each other, Singapore and Australia, where they have a shared perspective about Asia, uh, shared values, a shared future, and are willing to commit in each other. Dr Ng will meet Australia's Prime Minister and Defence Minister over the next two days. They will explore more areas of defence cooperation as well as shared diplomacy initiatives. All these include ways to handle US-China rivalry as well as the situation in Ukraine. One of Singapore's latest military drones is on show for the first time. An exercise wallaby in Australia is being paired with another that's set to give the Singapore Armed Forces an even bigger picture view while still zooming in on the tiny details. As Cheryl Locke explains. This is more than just your average drone. It's built to sea and helps to strike. The Veloce 15 unmanned aero vehicle or V15 was the first developed locally in Singapore. With its size and flexibility, it acts as extra eyes for the Singapore Armed Forces. And the extensive Shoalwater Bay training area means the drone can spread its wings much further. They hone my competency of the platform and from this experience, I learned that concurrent, fly, concurrent flying of the um, UAV requires complex coordination between the operator to achieve mission success. In addition, operating in foreign terrain requires us to be more adaptable to the challenges brought forward by the weather condition. And that's with everything else at this exercise, collaboration's the name of the game. For the first time, the V-15s are paired with a larger partner, the Heron 1. Together, the machines will be able to get a full scan of any situation, down to the small details. So for the H1, uh, because you can see uh, its uh, endurance is better, its capabilities are better, you can see a bigger space, uh, coupled with the V15, which is uh, able to do uh, last mile uh, 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 intelligence and ISR gathering for our troops on the ground. Uh, this creates better situation awareness for our, for our troops on the ground, and therefore uh, does uh, provide more efficient and more safe training for the SAF to achieve its mission outcomes. And the sharing of information just got better. With this new mobile imagery intelligence dissemination system, the Heron 1 can now send footage outside command posts. That tracking data means targets are better identified. We are then uh, able to utilize various capabilities such as auto-target detection uh, for quick and efficient uh, target uh, detection, classification and recognition, uh, as well as uh, allow us to foresee and predict uh, possible uh, movements of the enemy as well as uh, potential targets. The system was launched in August this year. Here at Exercise Wallaby is being tested by V15 operators for the very first time. However, in the future, it could be used by other services in the Singapore Armed Forces as well. Sherry Lok, CNA, Rockhampton.